Hi everybody. I know it's been a while since my last video. I apologize. Um, I've actually been sick. I got sick and then I went out of town for a little bit and then I got back and I got sick again. You can probably still hear it a little bit in my voice. I'm kind of at the tail end of it. But I was feeling well enough to do a video. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I figure let's give it a go. Um, I want to talk about sexual fluidity. It's a topic that um, actually Sarah Blaze, the president of MVK or Metro Vancouver Kink, her and I will be talking about it for Converge Con's pub night coming up. I'll leave a link um, for when it's coming, but I also kind of just wanted a video on the topic in general, as well as maybe to give people an idea of what the topic is about, if they might be interested in coming to this pub night. So, either way, I really want to talk about sexual fluidity. So, what is sexual fluidity, you might ask? Basically, it's the concept and the idea that people's attractions can change. I know, right? How dare people possibly change what they might be attracted to or change how they might identify in terms of their orientation? Is this a new idea? It's definitely an idea that's getting talked about more. And I'm going to go into this. So we've all heard, I'm sure, of Lady Gaga's song, Born This Way. She also has a Born This Way foundation. That's idea isn't really new. I mean, activists for decades have been using the kind of born this way message um, as a way to fight for things like equal rights, to help get rid of conversion therapy as a medical practice, and to help, basically to help get rid of the idea that you can change someone's sexual orientation. Obviously, we're not done. We still have a ways to go. But I think that the born this way kind of message needs to be tweaked just a little bit. And here's why. Speaking from a personal perspective here, as a queer woman, I have experienced apprehension from other queer women because I have been with men in the past, that I have had past romantic and sexual relationships with men. And I even asked somebody this once. I asked her, what is it that makes you apprehensive about the fact that I've been with men? What's, what's the underlying issue here? And she said she was worried. She said, honestly, I feel worried and insecure that you might leave me for a man which is frustrating and kind of funny because I've dated men that have told me that they're worried I'm going to leave them for a woman. We just can't win, eh? Seriously. I've met a lot of queer men that have had issues in the gay male community, um, whether they were bi or, or any queer man that had relationships, past or present, with women that they were met with apprehension and a lot of judgment as well from other men in the gay community being told things like just come out already or you're not really gay if you've been with women. Unfortunately, this is all too common within the queer community. And don't even get me started on trans folks, seriously, within straight and queer communities, trans folks have been met with either over-sexualization and fetishization or not being validated in their own gender identities. Ugh. When I've told some of my straight friends in conversation about how this happens and that it is that common within the LGBTQ plus community, even like my straight friends are like, what? How is there so much judgment within that community when you already have to deal with so much from outside communities? I kid you not. I sat down with a Mennonite pastor and had a conversation and that kind of topic came up. This is a pastor that believes, this is another conversation, but this is a pastor that believes that basically 
anything outside of heterosexual intramarital sex for the purpose of procreation, anything other than that is sinful. That's what she believed. And she was blown away when we talked about discrimination within the queer community. She even said, you have so many people and so many other organizations already judging you and discriminating this group. How is there so much discrimination within that group? Honestly, I don't know. I've racked my brain a lot. It's been something on my mind for years. And I think a lot of it comes down to this kind of idea that our sexuality is fixed, that you are either one or the other, that it doesn't change. You've always been one way and it has to be you're gay or straight. There's nothing in between. And I know we've needed that message to show other people that they can't change a person's sexuality. But it's, it's more complicated than that. And yes, it's true. No one from the outside is going to change your sexual orientation or your gender identity. But your own identity can be fluid and is fluid. That can change because guess what? People, human beings, have a nature of change. And not that it's anyone's business on why that change happens. It can be for several reasons. It can be just things you haven't discovered about yourself. Maybe you have been unfortunately stuck in a closet for a long time. Um, in, my, in my personal experience, raised in a very conservative religious community, that, I didn't even really think that was an option for me. It wasn't something that I'd considered until I got older and had people in my life that loved me and helped kind of let me do some self-discovery. That can be the case. Or you can just, your desires and what you're attracted to can change. And I don't know, I think we should be open to that. When I came out, I constantly and still sometimes do, felt the need to justify my queerness to everyone. And that's really unnecessary. I think we should just hear what people have to say and accept it. Accept people for who they are. So is there any way that we can take this born this way message that has helped queer people get to you know, where they are, and just tweak that message just a little bit to kind of get rid of this idea that sexuality is fixed, that you are one or the other. And how about just love and accept and support people for how they identify? And I don't know, just recognize that people in general are fluid in nature and therefore their sexual orientation or their gender identity can also be fluid. So those are just some of my initial thoughts. I'm gonna be talking more about it with Sarah Blaze at the Converge Con Pub Night. I'll link uh, the event and the date and the time um, below. But um, if you wanna to come to that or if you just wanna give me some of your thoughts, you can feel free to message me or comment below. Let me know what you think. And yeah, let's get some conversation going. You can learn more about what I do, what classes I do, where I'm going to be on my website at alternativesexuality.ca. You can find me on Twitter at the reddest of Rob. And other than that, have a good night.